Once upon a time, not so long ago, in the little village of Kapli, lived a young boy named Boris. Boris was a happy little boy who never had reason to cry or be depressed. He was surrounded by people who loved him and showered him with gifts. In fact, everyone in the village was cheerful and happy, making the quaint village a peaceful place to live. But on July 23rd, something happened that would change the village forever. It was Boris's birthday, and the whole village was there to celebrate. They played games, ate cake, and gave Boris a mountain of gifts. Boris was extremely happy as he opened his gifts. Ginny Pincus, the third grade music teacher, gave him the gift that would change his life forever, a drum. The next day, when Boris hit the drum for the first time, something clicked in his brain. From that day on, from dawn to dusk, Boris continually beat his drum. He never played soft or slow, but always fast and hard, even eating while he played. The villagers were so happy to see Boris enjoying his gift that they didn't mind the continuous beat of the drum. Ginny was especially proud that she had given the perfect gift. As the years passed, the sound of the drum began to get old. The final blow came 30 years later when Mrs. Crusley developed a brain tumor because of the constant beat from Boris's drum. The villagers developed Operation Silence. Its objective? To stop Boris from drumming. First, they tried to pry the drum away while Boris slept, but he kicked them with his sharp pointy shoes, sending several to the hospital. Then they tried to tackle him and tie his hands behind his back, but they just bounced off his blubber. Some of the villagers stuffed a watermelon over his head, but Boris just ate right through it and kept drumming. Finally, Plan D was implemented. The butcher's son, Vladimir, was sent with a large cleaver to Boris's house where he cut off Boris's arms. It was July 23rd, and silence fell over the village. Boris sat, head against plump chest, tears welling up in his big brown eyes, not because of the pain, not because of the blood splurting from his armholes, but because he would never be able to play his drum again. He wanted to die then and there, but first he must kill his only friend, the only friend he still had, <laughs> the only friend he ever had. What could he use to crush the drum? His head? He raised it, but it just bounced off the drum, making that beautiful sound once again. A broad, toothy grin crossed Boris's face. Now, if you go visit Capley, you will find Boris sitting in the middle of the town square, drumming away with his face. Or will